everybody. So it's Sunday and that means it's time for family movie night. And this week we are looking at a very special film uh, in honor of the Lego Batman movie uh, coming out this weekend. I thought it would be perfect to talk about the Lego movie, the original film from 2014. And this is a movie that I really, really, really responded that many, many people really responded to. And uh, it's one that I think is held up very, very, very well. I watched it this week and I still just, I love it. And I, I think what makes it so effective is that it's enjoyable on so many layers and levels. And, uh, you know, going into it, I didn't think that it was going to be very good. I thought it was just going to be a commercial for toys and whatever, but they used the medium of Legos and all the different IPs that were available to them to create something that was really, really special. And, you know, you've seen a lot of copycats <laughs> since then of uh, them, people trying to turn toys into troll, you know, whether it's trolls or whether it's Angry Birds or whatever, trying to turn the, these, these properties into movies, but none of them have had sort of the layers of enjoyment. I think that uh, that the Lego movie had. So let me talk about some of these layers. You have an, an incredible visual experience with the Lego movie. It looks like stop motion if you didn't know, uh, but it's actually CG. And I just love the way that it ebbs and flows in, in the in the Legos and just any way that they could sort of make something more Lego-y, <laughs> they did. And so, you know, if a character jumps into water, you see the wave m merge and flow like, like Legos would, you know, if they were upset like that. And I, I love that. And I love the way that you get to see so many different worlds and so many different places. And it's kind of what I wanted in Wreck-It Ralph, but Wreck-It Ralph stays in Sugar Rush all that time. I like the way in the Lego movie you get to Cloud Cuckoo Land and you get to the Old West and you're in middle the Middle East, the you're in the Middle Earth section. You're in all, all of that. I think it just keeps it popping, it keeps it going, and you have the live action sequ sequence. And so it just is so inventive and creative and constantly surprising the viewer. Layer that it is very enjoyable is uh, in the main story. You have Emmett, who is basically a kind of a soldier going through life, not thinking about what, uh, what he's doing and, and what he matters. He's just following the instructions, basically. And, uh, and then something happens where he becomes special. And people, you know, tell him he gets the piece of resistance and he's he is all of a sudden special. And But he also realizes how unspecial that he previously was. And so there's something beautiful sort of about his character journey that he goes on where he, he becomes kind of sad because he realizes that he, nobody really cared for him and that he didn't really have any love in his life. And, but you see him sort of gain confidence throughout the course of the story, which is really, really nice to see. See him interacting with all these different uh, personalities and trying to become a leader. And I think all of that is, is really good for kids to see uh, the, the somebody who's more of an introvert, somebody who's more of a follower, and how the, how those people can also become become leaders and become important examples. And so that's all just wonderful. And, and then it also has this layer of uh, showing how the randomness of child's play and the way that a kid will just like dump open a, a thing of Legos and will, uh, you know, will mix together Star Wars and Harry Potter. And like the, to them, they don't care that they're from all these different franchises and they're all mixed together. And, and, uh, and that's what makes, you know, you might have a dinosaur mixed in there. You might have a, <laughs> a spaceman mixed in there. And they don't care because that's the way they their their world. They they create their own world, and I love that. And especially when the live action sequence, when uh, he's trying to explain to his father the way that he thinks and the way that 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 he plays, and and that moment that they have together is really beautiful and and lovely and unexpected. You're not expecting for a movie called the Lego Movie to go that deep and that be that profound. And so that's just wonderful. And it's also just so funny. It's such a well-written script thing from the, the, the Star Wars uh, rave. That's one of my favorite jokes. And of little jokes like when uh, Green Lantern is, is bothering Superman and kind of following him. And I, I love Batman in this. He was so funny. Will Arnett's great in the role, very sarcastic and dry and, and 
So, you know, it's just, it's, it's kind of got everything that you could want in a movie. It's visually really inventive. It's got great heart, great message. It's so funny. It's very rewatchable, I think. It, it's something that you can get different things out of it every time you watch it. And so I really do love the Lego movie. It's one of my favorite animated films to come out in the last five years. And I think it was an actual travesty that it wasn't nominated that year for Best Animated Film. It, not, it should have won. Uh, if, if one of the independent films wasn't going to win, then this one should have won. But it didn't, and Bigger 6, six won instead. And so, yeah, that's my thoughts on the Lego movie. I just love it. I love watching it. Uh, let me know what you think of it. Where are you at on it? And uh, thanks so much. Please subscribe to my channel, and I'll talk to you later. Bye!